What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out nine wrestling gimmicks that took years to get over. We have seen a few times in wrestling where someone initially didn't get over when projected to, and it took them some time for that character to you know get over with the you know with the fans whether it's a, a a character change or a gimmick change but eventually at some point it sticks and then they become easily a fan favorite and that usually happens it's rare that someone immediately comes into the business and they're automatically over and it stays that way usually it takes some type of progression and sometimes they take a few years for someone to get to that point where we're like okay this is the guy that we want to see at the top so we're going to check out some of these instances where it took a wrestler a few years to become that guy we know one that's probably going to instantly be on this video that's roman reigns it took them forever to get him get to get him to where he is now and honestly it worked out for him in the end but we remember the years of the suffering succotashes and the just 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 horrible booking and the superman style roman reigns overcomes everything booking that just ultimately did not work for his early years so there were some fans of it but a lot of us were not big fans of it until recently it took them time to get him correct for the fans are like you know what he's the top guy he deserves to be there let's check this out should be a good one get ready to be inspired folks because this bunch of Jesus, bro. Six successes years. all managed to eventually establish themselves as some of the most dominant exciting and popular stars in the game so i am gareth here from what culture wrestling and here are nine wrestling gimmicks that took years to get over number nine boogs was occasionally turning heads in developmental and on youtube for years mm. well, it may have taken years Didn't know that. for WWE to finally realize what they had with the meaty ball of guitar shredding charisma that is this mustache titan. The folks taking in Wait, weekly episodes uh, of charisma that is this mustache titan. Yeah, and then he just got released not too long ago. That's crazy. The folks taking in weekly episodes of NXT back in 2019 quickly knew there was something special about this lad. Boogs was also turning heads with his explosive personality on his YouTube channel. His oh, wow. I Need a Hero workout is a work of hulking art. And from there, it didn't take long for the main roster crowd to fall in love with the charming powerhouse too. Number 8, the guns are finally up after being... And he, the thing is, I, I think they just, it's, he had to look and he definitely definitely had that coked up i'm ready to go brother vibe and i can see fans you know being interested in him i just think outside of the baron corbin feud which didn't really do too much and then obviously that injury him getting injured i believe at uh wrestlemania that year it, it kind of slowed down his progress it's like he had the potential i don't know if wwe was gonna really um I, my bad. I don't think he feuded with Baron Corbin. I'm thinking of Mad Cat Moss. My bad. I'm thinking of Mad Cat Moss. I am totally thinking of somebody else. I don't think he feuded with Baron Corbin. My bad about that, y'all. But him having that injury at WrestleMania kind of halted his push. And I, I, I think he was just kind of destined for mid-card purgatory because he was like that that funny act that fans could get in, you know, invested in just a little bit, but they weren't going to take him too seriously. I just didn't feel they would. Being all elite since 2020. Despite clearly being two lads who boasted the same sort of giddy energy and personality as their old man, Austin and Colton Gunn never really found their own identities whilst working as part of the Gun Club. And it was uh -huh. only after walking away from an alliance with the acclaimed and their pops a few years into their run on the AEW roster, when the brothers started to really grow and find themselves as a tag unit. Sure, they definitely weren't ready to hold AEW World Tag Team Gold when they shockingly bested Max Caster and Anthony Bowens for the belts in February of this year. It took them a few years to step out of their degenerate father's shadow and cement themselves as one of the most entertaining teams on the AEW roster. But their always outrageous collision antics were well worth the wait. Number seven. I'm kind of indifferent. I, 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 I'm, they're like they're, they're okay. I don't know if I would call them over. That's an interesting one. Y'all let me know if y'all feel like they're as over as a team. I do feel like they've gotten better for sure, but 
I don't know if I would just. They're in a better situation than just being in their father's footsteps. I I can't agree with that. Seven. It took Braun Strowman a while to shake off his Wyatt family. The this is very true. Men didn't really do much to convince audiences <laughs> that he was anything more than Vince McMahon's latest monster of the month during mm -hmm. that first year alongside Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan. With Braun Strowman then being unceremoniously split from his family during the 2016 draft. And while many understandably assumed that this could be the beginning of the end for the big man, Strowman remarkably began making an impact in more ways than one. His thrilling squashes were dynamic and quickly became weekly red show highlights yeah. as he tore through the likes of Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns before ultimately colliding with Brock Lesnar over the Universal Championship. Fans soon couldn't resist boarding the Strowman Express. But yeah. I've got a question for you. you. Super what do over. you think is the greatest squash of all time? Let me know in the comments section he down below. He definitely got himself Number six, over. Roman Reigns finally becomes as, the top guy after six as the as the the dominant big guy it was he he was able to get himself over he wasn't really that crazy great in the ring but i think because everyone's hatred or a lot of people's hatred of roman reigns and him destroying roman reigns on numerous occasions he became over which was funny when you think about it Six years of trying. Throughout the Shield's run as the main roster's hounds of justice, it was painfully clear exactly who WWE felt was their undisputed top guy of tomorrow. Yep. However, once the unit dramatically split in 2014, fans quickly grew tired of the big dog character and simply would not accept the new chosen one as their nope. top babyface in the years that followed. Didn't work. But his decision to step away from the ring in 2020 due to the yes. COVID-19 pandemic finally set the stage for the character tweak that would finally turn him into the undisputed biggest star in the industry Bats. WWE had wanted him to be all along. Yep. Gone were the cheesy one-liners, cringy hand gestures, and lazy Shield-esque presentation. The tribal chief that appeared at SummerSlam 2020 quickly established himself as a badass heel force you couldn't help but get behind during the Thunderdome era. And after years mm -hmm. of wanting nothing to do with him, fans now could not wait to acknowledge Reigns when they finally returned in 2021. Number five, a lion. And the crazy thing is, bro. The crazy thing is it took it took damn near a pandemic for that to happen, bro. It took a pandemic for Vince to finally say, all right, because Roman didn't want to come back the same way and they had the Thunderdome so they can kind of experiment more. That's really what it was, because if not, we I think we would have got the same Roman we've been getting. It took him having to step away for his health and the whole Thunderdome situation, not having a live crowd. Cause that's when WWE started to experiment more than they have in a long time. Cause they didn't have a live crowd. So they can experiment and do more. And Vince was like, all right, cool, cool. Let's see what happens. And because he gave the green light, I don't know if he was uh, reluctant to it, but because he gave the green light for it, he now has the biggest star that he ever wanted. In his company. Simple as that. It's crazy. Elias drifts on NXT for years before being called up. <laughs> Elias Samson first popped up on NXT programming alongside a certain House of Black figure, Buddy Matthews. And oh. after spending the next year or so getting some reps in on the Black and Gold show, Elias finally appeared to have found his stage when he first strolled onto the Red brand in April 2017. This unassuming debut very quickly turned into an unexpected movement in the months that followed. With the bearded Acoustic Stars mm -hmm. weekly concerts regularly producing deafening reactions as he tore down the various hometown teams of those still happily walking with Elias. Yeah. One of the rare NXT call-ups that led to a far more successful run than the one he drifted through in Full Sail. And then Number got four, released. Seth yep. They weren't really doing much with Elias either. So... That's, that can tell you something. Rollins did not become a popular visionary overnight. 2020 was a rather dull year for WWE's resident architect. After winning the Royal Rumble and eventually lifting the Universal Championship as one of the hottest babyfaces in the company the year prior, Seth Rollins returned to the dark side as he morphed into Raw's droning Monday Night Messiah. But that obsession with the greater good, the greater good. Shut it! from his stunning all-white clothing at WrestleMania 36 to his Rey Mysterio-inspired Phantom Gear at the following SummerSlam. Rollins would eventually take these ridiculous and flamboyant outfits and use them as the foundation for a character that would eventually take him right back to the top. In the yeah, it's crazy. The 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 more 
while the costumes got it it transformed and it, it's become this thing on top of his entrance music having the whoa it, it, it's it's morphed into its own zesty vibe <laughs> um yeah it, it's it's crazy it I want to say when he when it first started happening, I don't think it was as over. I think people felt, you know, some people felt like he was kind of overdoing it or whatnot. The some people compared him to like a wannabe Joker or a great value Joker. But over time, it's kind of gotten over since the pandemic. It's 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 the thing that most people want to do: chant and sing along with his flamboyant outfits on. Or oh, what not when they come to the shows. Up to his WrestleMania 37 battle with Cesaro. This visionary not only began ordering folks to embrace the vision, he also continued experimenting with his increasingly insane look. The yeah. fiery suits and other balmy jackets slash attires, combined with a slightly more unhinged Joker going through a midlife crisis personality. <laughs> what did he say? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> increasingly insane look the fiery suits and other balmy jacket slasher tires combined with a slightly more unhinged joker going through yep. a midlife crisis there we go i said it all eventually led to Rollins then becoming an undeniable fan favorite once again. It's impossible to get through a single episode of Raw without the sound of his song being roared back at him yeah. by thousands of believers. Number three, Orange Cassidy has been squeezing for years. Orange Cassidy <laughs> has managed to go from relative unknown to one of the most popular and impressive performers on AEW. Oh, he's TV. definitely uh, popular in AEW for sure. This wasn't just a case of turning up for his first day of work as part of Tony Khan's new company and deciding to randomly stick his hands in his pockets though cassidy had been getting in his opponent's heads via his half-assed antics since 2010 before signing with aew with chuck taylor noting to espn how he remembers seeing crowds turn on the lazy worker and being confused by his bold gimmick during the time before becoming all elite after years of figuring out what parts of the gimmick worked and which needed to be adjusted to elicit the biggest responses though eventually grew into one of the most popular talents on the independence there, there's some people that disagree y'all know who i'm talking about <laughs> y'all know who i'm talking about there's one individual that they call him pockets if you know you know he can't stand him and i can get why he feels that way coming from a different era of wrestling if you were to see that back in a day, it would probably infuriate people because he kind of takes he he's he's like a, a joke. He's like a, a, a he's like so he's too cool to wrestle you, even though he can wrestle you, but he's too cool to do it. Like it's 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 a it's a joke within itself. So some people would take that very disrespectfully, and like I said. The man's calls him pockets. So, if you know, you know. And though everyone from Tony Khan to Chris Jericho to a great many All Elite fans once again didn't fully understand what made this slacker, who can outwork just about anyone on the planet when he tries so special initially, Cassidy inevitably turned all his doubters into believers in the wonderful All Elite years that followed. Number two, Mark Henry's Hall of Pain wasn't built in a day. It's a good thing this Mark Henry true. signed a 10-year contract with WWE back in 1996 because it pretty much took him the length of that entire first deal to yeah. finally find a main event level character that worked. Yeah. And it wasn't until his violent return from a torn quadriceps in 2005 when the pieces finally started to fall into place for the intimidating powerhouse. And we've seen a video where basically it was what what um kind of spurred this this Hall of Pain gimmick was uh, a situation where Vince and them played a joke on him. It was supposed to be like a dark match after, I think it was a SmackDown taping, I believe. Could be wrong. Supposed to be a dark match, and he was about to go out there or whatever, but every, they, he went out there or whatnot, but you know what I'm saying? Nobody came out to fight him or anything like that. So he goes to the back, and everybody's gone. Like, no one's in Gorilla. Everybody's gone. And he felt disrespected and he was pissed and he was throwing shit. And that's Vince was like, this is what I want from you. Even though that's kind of a fucked up way to get that motivation. That's what he wanted from Mark Henry to be that guy. And I, I believe that's the birth or how the Hall of Pain, that gimmick, that intensity, 
destructive force of Mark Henry. That's how it became a thing because of them pretty much playing, uh, playing a prank on him. After taking out Batista on SmackDown, this new heel force went on to collide with the likes of World Heavyweight Champion Kurt Angle and The Undertaker before unfortunately going down injured again in 2006. And while the next few years would see the savage big man whooping ass a little further down the card, Henry was eventually given the chance to fully grow into the dominant top heel, shown glimpses of being during that impactful 2005-06 run. In 2011, The Big Show, Kane, The Great Carly, Sheamus and Randy Orton were all brutally inducted into a hall of pain he first started building six mm -hmm. years earlier. The Destroyer also went on to finally lift World Heavyweight Championship gold as his helpless adversaries crumbled before him. And those watching on were regularly left picking their jaws up off the floor. Number one, LA Knight yep. has been yanked since his Triple H workout DVD days. And this is crazy, bro, because LA Knight, but the fact that he was doing so many different things, you saw him in so many different forms of media it's fucking crazy man <laughs> while everybody is now very much talking about smackdown's one and only mega star it took a solid decade of trial and error to create the version of la knight seen blowing the roof mm -hmm. off of arenas around the globe today as knight himself noted in a recent appearance on the after the bell podcast he's been playing a pretty similar character for around 13 years at this mm -hmm. point and a lot of the things he'd play with and attempt to add to his gimmick were taken from his personality in real life on top of the everybody part of his shtick coming from his time working in a restaurant years ago, his iconic yeah, yeah has also been a part <laughs> of his personality since his first run in WWE all the way back in 2013-14. With Knight appearing in a Triple H workout DVD in the time before eventually showing up as Eli Drake in Impact Wrestling and the NWA, someone recently spotted him actually uttering <laughs> one of his unmistakable yeah cries as he finished off a few crunches. And that's wow, all this. That's Nobody so other great, gimmicks man. That took years to get over that's that is great man and i'm so happy that he's getting the the bigger love you know from a a, a bigger audience like people have, you know i'm sure for years have shown their appreciation for la night i've seen the clips of him you know and just in other companies and promotions you know having that same intensity but now he's on a bigger stage in front of a, a a bigger fan base and for him to finally get that recognition is fantastic remember this guy came from nxt and was instantly being booked into oblivion as a manager for the i think the maximum male models he was a manager he was a manager for the male models he wasn't even a wrestler they weren't even putting him in a wrestling form that's what vince had came up for him he was done he was done bro he was doa dead on arrival they weren't going to do nothing with him he would at some point he definitely, if they would have kept that gimmick going, if Vince would have had his way, he definitely would have been featured in Denver. And the fact that Triple H was able to come in, stop that, and been able to kind of get him in the right trajectory, it's fantastic. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with him. He is the hottest, most over individual damn near in the company, bro. He's easily the top babyface in the company. Before he was a heel, he was still, even when he was getting that love and notoriety, he was still marketed, you know, still considered a heel, but it didn't matter. People loved him too much. He was an overwhelming babyface, and now he's one of the top babyfaces in the company. So it's a, it's a testament to hard work, dedication, and never giving up on yourself, and you never know what can happen. He never gave up on himself, and now look at him, the, one of the biggest stars in the company comment down below let me know some other wrestling gimmicks or wrestlers that it took them a time to finally get over with the fans if it wasn't listed on this list i know there's a few that it, it they weren't instantly just gems you know when it happened or the gimmicks weren't just gems when it initially was brought to the surface it took some time for people to get used to and then it got over but let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys on the channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still here on the speedy YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.